Good day, great top learners. Welcome once again to today's mathematical literacy lesson. My name is Bernard Donko, and this lesson is brought to you by the Northern Cape Department of Education in collaboration with the Pagama Research and Development. So, today's lesson is part of our mathematical literacy revision towards the prelim and the final. I know you have been working hard, so now we have to finish, we have to push, we have to ensure that you are ready for the exams. So today's lesson, we want to focus on higher pitches. Hmm, higher pitches. Can somebody tell me then, when you talk of higher pitches, what comes into your mind? What are some of the things that you look for? What are some of the things that make you understand that this arrangement, this deal is a higher pitches arrangement? Yes, anyone? Can you share? Don't worry, I can see you, yeah. With the higher purchase agreement, there's some few things that differentiate it from a lay-by. So we are going to look at them now. But I want you to be able to, by this time, be able to distinguish between interest and interest values, perform simple and compound interest calculations. Remember our previous lesson, we talked about simple interest and compound interest. If you did not get it, or you did not understand well, ask for the teachers to give to you, or they can even print out the slides for you so that you can use it for your studies. All right, now you have to consider how higher purchase arrangements work. Higher purchase for a personal, a car, or a house where repayment is made every month. Those are the things we want to consider in this lesson. By now, you know what who we call a lender, a borrower, an investor, an interest rate, an interest value, an investment. Those things, I hope by now you are able to explain them thoroughly. So I have given you one baseline activity here. A person borrowed 800 rand. And then the person has decided to pay it back in three months at simple interest rate of 5%. So this one should be very simple for us because we did simple interest and compound interest in our previous lesson. Write down the principal amount. What is the main amount that the person borrowed? Good. That is the 800. When we talk of principal amount, we don't mean principal like the principal of the school. We are talking of the amount that was borrowed. So I was hoping that you wrote 800 rand. Okay. Let's look at 1.2. You have to determine the total amount that will be paid. So what should we do there? Look at what I have written and given to you. So remember the person borrowed it for how many months? Three months. How much is the principal amount? 800. So interest will be 5 over 100 times 800. We don't divide the 5 by 2 or what, what because it's per annum. That's how you end up getting 40 rand. So now that you have 40 rand, what should you do? You add it to the 800. So now, at the end of month one, we are going to owe 840. But there's a simpler way of working it out. Because we are talking of simple interest, all we do is to multiply the interest we got for month one by three. So we're going to get 120. Then we add the 120 to the 800, which will give us 920 rand. Well done if you got that correct. Here is where our focus is. Higher purchase. Goods and products such as furniture can be purchased. You know it by now. That not everybody has the money lying around so that they can buy everything cash. So some of us, we enter into what you call a higher purchase agreement. So with the higher purchase agreement, you end up paying what you call installment. Most of the time, they even ask you to pay what you call a deposit. These are the things you must consider when you are dealing with higher purchase. Now, a higher purchase agreement is therefore a financial agreement between the shop and the customer about how the customer is going to pay for the item that they want. So the things that I want you to consider is that, remember that a higher purchase interest is always on simple interest. What is the interest we work with? Simple interest. We don't use higher, uh, compound interest in higher purchase. Never forget that. And then the amount that we are going to charge or the interest is going to be on the amount that you are owing. So, for example, if the amount was 10,000 and you put a deposit of 2,000, they don't charge you the simple interest on 10,000. They must charge it on the remaining amount, which is going to be the 8,000. Well done on that. 
So now we are going to the next portion. Here is what I want you to look at. The period for us to pay can be 12 months, 24 months, 36 months, 48, 60, 72 months, especially like cars. It goes to about 72 months. Others, about 48 months. It all depends on the shop and the agreement that you enter with. So let's look at some of the other things that we need to consider. One, the key is installment. Remember, you are taking the item before you finish paying. So you have to agree on how much installment you are willing to pay. They will calculate and tell you, if you feel that is too much, you negotiate. If you feel that you can afford, you continue paying for it. It is very, very, very important. Now, here is the thing. With higher purchase, you must know that sometimes there's insurance because you are taking the item like TV. What if you, you get home and the TV doesn't work? Or somebody just breaks it. So you have to get insurance. You have to do admin fee. The people who are doing the paperwork, they are not there looking at you, how beautiful you are. They are working. So you pay admin fee. You pay handling fee. That one who is using the forklift to go and lift that big item we bring to you. How do they get the money? They get paid with handling fee. We have VAT must be paid. And then there is something called balloon payment. Balloon payment is not like a balloon that you blow. <laughs> no, 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 no. Balloon payment is that big lump sum of money that you must pay when you finish the last repayment. So maybe you bought a car, you're paying 2000 every month, but there's a balloon payment of about 20000 It means when you finish paying the last 2000 you must bring the 20000 so that the car can be used now. If you don't bring the 20000 no problem. It means you are finished with using the car. You give it back to the shop. I hope we understand each other. Good. Now, let's look at the other portions. Sometimes there are hidden costs, things that you don't know about. So, my learners, don't just put your signature on things because now you finish matric, you have got some job and you, you are so pressed. No. Read the fine print. Read those little things that they are talking to you about because you might end up owing for a long, 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 long time. I'm telling you. Okay. So, here we have Mbuzu. He saw an advert of a bedroom suite. He wants to sleep nice. They are saying it costs 6999 Now, the shop decided to give Mbuzo a form of a deal. They are saying, okay, you must give us 700 rand deposit. After that, you're going to pay 300 every month over a period of 24 months. So my question to you is, what will be the total cost of the bedroom suit? Because now, this person, Mbuzo, is taking it on a higher purchase agreement. Remember, he paid a deposit, isn't it? So let's work together. One, he is paying 300 every month. For how long? 24 months. That's why you see me multiplying by 24. Meaning, the 300 times 24, he would have paid 7,200. But that is not all. Remember, he gave them 700. Uh, that's not for free. So we must add that 700 deposit. So all in all, how much is he going to pay for this furniture? 7,900. Well done if you got it correct. We are getting somewhere. Look at the second one. Identify at least two advantages and two disadvantages of higher purchase. When you want to enter a higher purchase agreement, these are some type of exam questions. They can say, what are some of the benefits of a higher purchase agreement? And you have to be able to give us some of them. So let's look here. One of the good things about higher purchase is that you are able to use the item now without full payment. A car. If a car is 100000 or 500000 you don't have 500000 but you enter that agreement, they give you the keys. You go up there like a concurrent hero. Then you get to the house. They, yeah. Yes, you have entered into a higher purchase agreement. You use the item before you finish paying for it. Okay? Then, because it's a simple interest, the interest rate is fixed. You know how much they're adding. So you don't have to worry. But here are some of the other things that you have to also look at. We have got what we call disadvantages, some challenges. Not so nice. The first one is that hmm, the total cost can be higher. Remember what we are doing now. The item was 6999 but he ended up paying around 7900 because you entered into a higher purchase. So when we ask you in examination, 
give an advantage or disadvantage. These are some of the things I want you to write down. And then sometimes ownership only after final payment. The final payment can be a balloon payment. That big chunk of money that you must give to the shop. Otherwise, the item is not yours. Okay. Let's look at 1.3. How much more will a customer pay for buying the bedroom suit on higher purchase agreement? You must show calculations. So remember the 7,900 because you put a deposit and then you are paying 300 for 24 months. This one's good. So now, how much more? We are talking of the difference. Whenever you see difference, remember I'm asking you to subtract. So we are paying 7,900 and the Bedroom suit was costing $6,999. So all in all, you would have paid extra 901 rand more. I hope you can do this when you find it in the examination. I believe completely in you. So let's look at some exam type questions. Some kind of questions that they can ask you in the examination. Here is a TV. It looks nice. Everything looks there. They are saying the deal that will make you take this goes with the following. You must bring 10% deposit. Then they are going to charge you 20,75 annual simple interest rate, meaning they charge you per annum for a period of three years. So question number 2.1. The promotion on the internet says that the discount offered on the more expensive one, which is the 8,999, is 15%. They are claiming. They said, you know what? It was more than this, but the discount we are offering is about 15%. So your job as a math learner is calculate the percentage discount if the original was 10,499 in order to verify. I'm giving you five minutes. You work it out. We'll come back later. My learners, we are back. So let's look at how you're supposed to do this work. Percentage discount, we have 1,500. Where am I getting it from? You take the 10,499, you minus the 8,999, it will give you that. So that now you have the 1,500 divided by the 10,499, multiply everything by 100. When you multiply by 100, what are you going to get? Let's do it together. You're going to get 14.2875. Round it off almost equal to 14.29. Remember, in the advert, they said it's 15%. But when you worked it out, you found that it's actually 14.29. So is that true or not? Claim is not correct. Okay, let's look at 2.2. This time, Assuming that you have taken the more expensive deal, this one, what will be the deposit? Because they told you things. Remember, it is costing $8,999. What is the deposit they are asking for? 10%. So you don't write 10%. You must calculate 10%, meaning you write 10 divide 100 times 8,999. What did you get? Let's press together. We want to confirm. So we are going to have 10 over 100 times 8,999, you get 899 rand and 90 cent. Good. Let's go to the next question, 2.3. Identify the interest. You can see this one I've given to you already. You meaning that as you read the question, the answers are already there. Yours is to apply your mind. Mentally, most of the answers are in the question. As long as you can read, of which I am sure you can read. As long as you can read, the answers are there. Identify the interest charge. There, there, there. 20.75. This time, it's your turn. If a deposit of 899.99 is paid on the expensive deal, calculate the amount payable after three years. Remember, we are giving them the deposit. Which means we don't owe them 8999 anymore. This is how you're supposed to do it. So, when you remove that 899 rand 90, not 99, 899 rand 90, we are going to have this. 
8,099 rand and 10 cents. 10 cents is your money. So you must not make it disappear. That's your 20.75 over 100, meaning we are going to have 1,680 rand and 56 cents. For how long? Three years. That's why you see that I am multiplying by three. Meaning the interest alone, we are going to have 5,041 rand. It should be 1,680 and 56 times three. That will give us 5,000 and 41 rand 69 cent so we add together now so we are going to have the 8099 and 10 cent plus the 5000 which is our interest we're going to now owe them 13140 rand 78 cent we must pay it in how long yes somebody there we must pay it in three years are we going to pay every year or you're going to pay every month yeah, we are going to pay every month, not every year. No, no, no. You are going to take that money, you divide it by the number of months in three years, meaning you divide it by 36 months. But that's not what we wanted. We just wanted you to tell us the total amount. So here, we have our question three. We have got Mangoba, who decides to buy the following law mower. No, it's tired of just moving it around like a toy. This time you want to sit like a conquering hero, you know, sit there and move it around. But here's the thing, this is this one. They have a brilliant loan mower on special. <laughs> How much? It is only now 23,900 rand. You are going to save 900. Ooh, that's a lot of money. All we want from you, deposit 2,300. And then installment, you are going to pay 975 rand for a period of 36 months. So my question to you, my learner, is you must write down the special cash price for the loan mower. What is the special cash price here? Hey, can you see? You write, there's the value. 23,099 rand. Well done up to this point. All right, let's look at the next question. Determine the price of the loan mower before the special. How much was it before it became 23,099 rand? Mm -hmm. Anybody? No, no, I, I want you to do it first before we discuss together. Okay, so this is how you're supposed to do it. You take that 23,000 and you add the savings. So we add the two amounts. Can you tell me how much we are going to get then? I got 23,999 rand. Well done if you got that. All right, let's look at 3.3. What percentage of the original cash price? Percentage. Meaning, when we work, our answer is going to end up being percent. So, what percentage of the original cash price is the saved amount? Can you see they have mentioned three things there? They have talked of percentage. They have talked of the original. They have talked of saved amount. So, this is how you are going to do it. Now, we are going to go back quickly. I want to show you something quickly. Look at here. Let's press again. We have 23,099 plus 900. So it means we are going to get 23,999. Sharp. This is fine. So we go to the next point. So here it must be 9. 99 23,999. So we take 900, we divide it by 23,999, and then we times everything by 100. That should give us 3.75. So it was actually 999, it was only a typing error for that one. Apologies, they're supposed to be 23,999 and you're going to get 3.75. Look at the question, it says, what percentage? What percentage? That's why you see me writing the unit as percentage. So when you find such questions, you must underline the keywords that the examiner is giving to you. Put them together and you realize that you are going to get the answer correct. So now, Mangoba decided to buy the loan mower on a higher purchase, meaning higher purchase agreement. You're going to get the item, you pay every month up until you finish paying. Now, what are we supposed to be doing here? 
Can you see that? It's now 23,300. Uh, 2, and then we are going to have here. Where are we getting 2,300 from? We are getting from here. What is that amount? It is the deposit. After you give them 2,300, you are still going to pay 975 francs for every month for a period of 36 months. That's why you see me writing here. So this 36 is 36 months. So when you have all in together, how much are you going to get? I want you to press with me. Press the values on the calculator there. 2,300 plus open bracket 975 rand times 36 months. Close the bracket. You are going to get a very beautiful amount. What is yours? Mine says 37,400. Did you get that? Well done. Okay. Let's go to 3.5. Calculate how much Mangoba would have saved had he bought the loan more cash. If he had decided to buy it cash, how much would he have saved? Can you see currently the amount is on your calculator? Yes, that amount, which is 37,400. Mm, that's how much he's paying after the three years. But if he decided to buy it cash, how much would he have saved? So what you are supposed to do is subtract the two pennies. 37,400 minus... 23,099. Can we subtract together quickly? 37,400 minus 23,099. That will be, I got my answer. Let's confirm with yours. Mine says 14,301 rand. I hope you got that correct. I got 14,301. Right. Now let's get into big stuff. We want to buy a car. Vroom, vroom. So we have question four. Study the advert. You see, they are telling us a whole lot of things. Look at here. The car is NP300. They are saying it's a special deal. The price is only 221,180 rand. Yeah, it's a very nice car. So my first question is, what is the cash price? Can you look into the advert there and tell me quickly? What's the cash price? Yes, that learner there in the middle. That one who is just right in, in between the friends there. Yes. What's the amount? There, there. Two, two, one, one eighty. There we are. Okay. Point two. If a person decides to pay for the vehicle in installments, determine the number of years it will take to pay for the vehicle. Number of years. So I want you to read. Go closer there and tell me what is the correct answer. Just go through the information there. You should be able to find some few information that will help you. Or you can come here. We are talking of number of years, not number of months. Did you manage to figure it out? You take that 60. You're going to divide it by 12. Why are we dividing by 12? Because a year is made up of 12 months. So we are going to take five years to finish paying off. Now, I want you to calculate the amount of the deposit that is needed. Look at here. They said you must pay a deposit of 11%. So let's work together. I'm giving you only three minutes. Can you work so that we can write the correct answer? Three minutes. You are supposed to take the 11% of what amount? Of the price of the vehicle. So let's go. There, 11 over 100 times 221,180. Press it together. 11 over 100 times 221,180. And I get, mm -hmm, let's say together, 24,329 rand and 80 cent. Well done up to this point. Okay, let's go to 4.4. Show by means of calculation how the total payment of 303,007 rand 80 cent was calculated. How did they get that? How did they get this money? I'm giving you five minutes. No, five minutes is too long. Actually, let's give it just three minutes. Uh-huh.
Put, put your hands together. Let's discuss. How did they get that 300,780 cents? Yes, how did they get it? Good. So they got it from the deposit plus the monthly installment plus the residual. The deposit plus the monthly installment. Remember, you calculated the deposit not long ago. Ne? Then the monthly installment plus the residual. When you work all of them, you should get the amount. So let's check. I hope you can see where is the 24,329 is coming from. Then there, 2,991 for 60 months. Then we are going to have the residual, the balloon. And then when we add all of them together, it should take us to 303,780 cent. All right, 4.5. How much will the person be paying cash or the person paying cash would have saved compared to the person paying on installment? Meaning if you had money cash, you see the questions that we are asking you. At the end of the day, we expect you to make informed decisions. We expect you to understand that once you finish matric, you are now on your own. You are almost a grown up where you have to take certain decisions and you have to make sense of them. So if you have the money and you can pay cash, you pay cash. It's yours. You don't owe anybody. But not all of us have got the money, which means sometimes we are supposed to go into this kind of agreement. But let's say you have the money. How much would you have saved? So what do you do? You take that 303,780 cents. You minus the cash price. So all in all, you would have saved around 81,000. That's a lot of good money here. What are you learning from here? So what it means is that you must only enter into this kind of agreement if really the item is very, very, very important to you. You cannot just rush for a young person who has just finished matric, you are starting to work, and your first agreement is to go and buy a very expensive couch. By the way, you are working, so you don't even have time to stay home. So why is that couch gathering dust, but you are paying on installment? Save that money, invest, put somewhere, because one day you're gonna need it. That's what we are trying to make you understand. But if you really, 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 really want it, then go for it, otherwise, don't just go into agreements, agreements, agreements. You must save for a rainy day. Because look at this. If you had 221,000, and I'm sure you are saying, but that's a lot of money. Yes, it is. But little drops of water make a mighty ocean. When you save those 20 rand, when you save those 10 rand, when you save those 100 rand, before you are away, you would have made a lot of big money. So if you had this money and you bought the car cash, now it's your car, you would have still saved 81,827. Question 4.6. What method of payment is the best value for money? What method of payment? Meaning the cash or the installment? So cash payment, look at it. We have to consider some few advantages or benefits. A customer will not have to pay the 10.5% or that 11% deposit because you're paying cash i hope you understand the whole idea here now all there will not be any residual remember there is a residual i mean after you have finished paying all those months you still have to give them 99,218 so if you had cash you don't have to pay for this 11 percent you don't have to pay for the residual i hope you understand that so if it was installment you are going to pay for all of them Let's look at question five. Anela is buying a TV which is costing 35000 That's a nice TV. On a higher purchase. Again, look at the agreement. What kind of agreement? Higher purchase. How do you know it's a higher purchase? Because you end up putting a deposit and then you pay the rest in installments. Meaning you get to take the item home and then you use it while you are paying for it. So the agreement is 21.7% interest per annum over a period of three years. Then she has to pay 10% deposit and then she must pay insurance, handling fee, admin fee. So this one is a big question, but I've broken it down bit by bit. 
so that you will understand what I mean. The first one that I want you to do for me is to determine the deposit. So let's go together. What's the deposit? 10%. We are working together. 10 over 100 times the price of the item, which is 35,000. Can we press together quickly? There. You should be able to have 3,500. Good. Let's go to the next question. Calculate the outstanding. Outstanding amount or the outstanding balance means after you have given them the deposit, how much do you still owe them? Remember the item was 35,000. What is the deposit you give to them? 3,500. So let's go. 35,000 minus 3,500. What should we be getting? Now we are owing them only 31,000. 500. So the next question then will be, since we have given them the deposit, we know the balance, calculate the interest to be paid on the balance. What is the balance again? 31,500. Then they are charging us interest of 21.7%. So let's see how you are supposed to have done it. There is my 21.7 over 100 times 31,500 times three years. Remember, it's simple interest. So you don't have to go year by year, year by year. That will just be wasting time. I know you have that three hours. Maybe you might have concession and stuff, but you have to make good use of the time that you have so that you can go over and check. So all in all, the interest alone is 20,506 rand and 50 cent. That's the interest. So can you see, we have worked out the deposit, we have determined the balance, we have worked out the interest we are going to pay for the TV. Now, we are supposed to determine the handling fee. The handling fee, we are paying it on the balance. So we have to work it out now. The balance is 31,500. So the handling fee is 5%. You see, these are the kind of questions that I want you to practice because I know you are going to find most of them in the exam. Then, this is 5%. So it's going to be Handling fee of 1575 Now we have to work out the monthly installment. Do you see, I didn't ask you about admin fee because it's already monthly. So there was no need for you to calculate. Insurance is already monthly. So this is how you work such a question out. One, you have a 31500 which you are owing them, plus the interest that you're going to pay, plus the handling fee all in all you are currently owing them fifty three thousand five hundred and eighty one hundred and fifty cent i will together on that i want you to check use your calculator press so that we're sure that we are writing the correct thing then the next thing you have to do now is to find the monthly instrument remember they said it's three years you don't pay it every year you pay it every month that's why i got 36 how did i get 36 three times 12. So every month, I'm supposed to pay 1488 plus the insurance, plus the admin. You pay all of them because you have bought the item. Like if you get out now and then it is broken. If you don't have insurance, you don't get anything back. That's why even for cell phones, they require that when you buy, maybe you must take insurance just in case it gets lost or is damaged beyond repair. So when we add all these ones together, it means every month you are going to pay 1,674 rand and eight cent. For that reason, I want to summarize for you so you get an idea of what you must do when you're talking of higher pages. If you had gone back a little bit, you realize that question 5.1 up to 5.5, usually in exam, that's one question. That is just one question. And they give you a mark of about 11 marks. So you will sit there and now you don't even know what to do. But if you break it down bit by bit, it's okay, I'm buying the item, I'm giving them a deposit. After deposit, I must know what is my balance. After the balance, I must then be able to calculate the interest on the balance. Now you get the interest times the number of years, you get the total interest. From there, you add the interest to the balance, Work out the handling fee, you divide by number of months. 
then all the other ones which you have to pay every month you add them together you will be so surprised that even though it was 11 marks 12 marks 9 marks before you are aware you have already covered yourself up and you are getting the marks so the interest on higher pages that's the first thing i want you to note the interest on higher pages is always a simple interest don't ever make a mistake of going to work with compound interest because we don't work with compound interest in higher pages the next thing is that you must remember when you talk of higher pages most of the agreement you have to give them a deposit when you don't have the deposit sometimes they can deny or decline most of the time because they want a business they just make a way so that you go just that you end up paying a little bit more the principal amount of the loan is therefore the cash price minus the deposit meaning that 35000 minus the the, uh, the five the 10 percent which is 3500 what's left that becomes your amount that you must work with remember these are the times or the terms which you can pay for the loan meaning you can work according to your strength if they have given you for two years and you think you want to work for three years go into that agreement with them and then pay as much as you can knowing very well that you are enjoying what you are paying for it is very very important so here is a small homework for you that i want you to attempt and then we will meet again in the next lesson. Thank you so much for being with us today. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. See you soon. Bye-bye.